Hello, this is Scott Schubert with Trading Mastermind. Today we're going to look at some specific insights into what trading methods really work. By now you have probably heard some of the results that many of our students are getting in their trading business and by now you probably know that many of our students are getting extraordinary unprecedented results in their trading in a very short period of time. What is it that we're doing that enables us to achieve such extraordinary results in a short period of time? As I've mentioned before, right now all over the world, many, many different people are all looking at the same markets and they're all seeing different things and they're all approaching trading in different ways and they all have different strategies that they're trying to use in order to capture profit from the markets. The trading world has a long history and there have been many brilliant minds who have made significant contributions to this body of knowledge. And there are many different ways that you can look at the market and derive some information from what you're seeing. Now here's a chart with nothing but Japanese candlesticks on it. Now certainly there is enough information on this chart without any additional indicators to possibly develop a trading system that is profitable. Now the term profitable can mean different things to different people because a lot of what determines the success of a trading system is in the trader's own psychology and self-discipline as well as the trader's own money management and risk management. Because we've often heard that if you have a trading method that is 50% uh, successful, that is uh, you have a a one to one win to loss ratio. 50% of the time your trading method is winning and 50% of the time it's losing but your risk to reward ratio is one to two so that your losses are averaging say 25 pips and your gains are averaging 50 pips well then you have an average net gain of 25 pips which is good and you have a winning trading system and if you do have self-discipline and good money management and risk management you could take a 50 percent accurate trading method and become a billionaire just by trading it over and over and yet so many traders are not able to do that simply because they don't have self-discipline and they don't have good money management well our trading method doesn't rely on making do with a 50 percent uh, win to loss ratio um, uh, personally I prefer to have a much higher win to loss ratio I, I when, if I'm going to enter a trade I want it to be a winning trade and I want it to have a very high probability that it's a winning trade so you could take a look at this chart with nothing else on it and there is quite a bit of information in this chart because every candlestick has a graphic representation of so here's just an average Japanese candlestick and this blue candle here the opening price was here, the closing price was higher, right here, and during that period of time the price made it to a high of up here and made it to a low of down here. Now because we have that information and because we can also see patterns in this chart, in addition to the the actual Japanese candlestick formations there's quite a bit of information that we can get out of this chart alone and one of the big mistakes that most traders make is getting involved in trading and immediately there's they're trading without looking at Japanese candlesticks and the meaning of the candlesticks without looking at pattern and they have indicators all over their screen thinking that by having lots of high-tech indicators on their screen they're going to be more able to uh, to trade successfully and in most cases that's that's really not the case but as you can see there's a a bit of information in this chart and uh, just for instance the market is going down with long red candles this happens to be actually a retracement in an uptrend and this candle right here is what it's a spinning top very close to being a doji and that happened to be the point where that retracement was over the market turned and it went up in the previous retracement same thing happened market retraced and then it formed this spinning top very close to a doji and then it turned and went up here the market was going down for a long period of time and then it made this little spinning top 
right here, and that was a signal that it was no longer going down. Here we have a bearish engulfing pattern. So the market was going up, it went sideways, and then we had a bearish engulfing pattern signaling that the market was now going down. Here again, strong movement down, doji signaled that that was the end of the movement down. The candlesticks themselves tell us quite a bit of information, but the biggest mistake that most traders make is in looking for one trading method or one trading strategy that involves a simple set of rules and they choose to trade that strategy while blinding themselves to all other information and looking for something that just works based on a simple set of rules rather than taking into consideration the entire picture. So then there's the idea of adding indicators and one of the most common indicator is the oscillator type of indicator. This indicator happens to be MACD, M-A-C-D or Moving Average Convergence Divergence. And this is a very common, uh, somewhat useful indicator and what it's doing is taking two moving averages of usually the close of price and plotting that in terms of whether the move those two moving averages are in the process of converging or diverging and then it uh, displays it in this format where you have this these series of lines which are a histogram and this uh, red line which is the signal line and one of the things you can do is if, if the histogram line is below zero here what we sometimes call the below the water line then that is considered to be uh, the market is in a bearish period when it crosses over the zero line that's considered to be a bullish period well somewhat accurate could you trade off of that there's quite a bit of lag in this indicator as you can see all it's really doing is following price So can an indicator like this be useful? Well, to a certain extent, it can be useful. So here's another commonly used indicator called stochastics. And this is another oscillator type indicator that it oscillates up and down. And it also has an overbought and oversold zone that is supposed to tell you a uh, possibility that uh, uh, price could be ready to turn. So let's see how well that works. Here the market was about to go up. It went into the oversold zone and made a what's called a bullish reversal, meaning the blue line crossed through the red line. And when it does that, it is uh, in a bullish reversal pattern. Then it made it up to here and uh, started to retrace and made a bearish reversal. This retracement uh, continued to go sideways till right about in here, started going up. There you had a bullish reversal forming right there. Continued to retrace down to here. Didn't make it to the oversold zone. You had a bullish reversal. So this indicator can also is kind of lagging. It kind of follows what price is doing. It's just another way of graphically displaying uh, pretty much the information that's already in the candlesticks in that uh, yeah price is going up going sideways going down and this just kind of further confirms it now can you trade off of that just buy every time this blue line crosses well try it <laughs> do you know any traders who are very wealthy and uh, that's what they're doing and buying every time this blue line crosses and selling every time it uh, crosses the other direction. Well, there might be a little bit more to it than that. So here's another thing people often look at in Forex trading, pivot points, pivot lines. And these are lines of support and resistance 
that are determined by a formula based on the previous day's high, low, open, and closing price. And you can display these on your charts. And the idea is when price approaches a pivot, let's say if it's uh, going up, it may hesitate or stop at the pivot point. Say price is going down. Well, it didn't hesitate at this pivot didn't hesitate right exactly at this pivot but it retraced in this general area it hesitated at this pivot and then it just kept on going so the general idea is when it, when price approaches a pivot it will either hesitate or stop or keep going through so how useful is that information can you trade based on, how would how would you use that in your trading decision is this the best way to look at the market in order to get the best results? There are many other ways of looking at the market and some of them are quite complicated. Many of them are about as effective as tossing a coin and if it's heads you buy and tails you sell. And in fact there is a prevailing belief in the trading industry that many people believe that no matter what you do there are always going to be a lot of losses and that you know, the trader just has no control over it that uh, trading is just uh, pretty much a, a business of guesswork well it has been my experience that it is possible to have a very high level of accuracy in your trading and if that wasn't the case why would you even bother to get involved in in this business so it is important to understand that yes it's possible to have a very high level of accuracy in this business and although I'm not going to disclose the details of our trading method right now I will remind you of the very obvious principle that was demonstrated in the previous lesson which was if you enter a trade there are three possible outcomes the market moves in your favor and you get profit the market continues to move sideways and you get a break even the market moves in the opposite direction against you and you get a loss and in addition to that I would like to point out that the market tends to do three different things sometimes it will go up as it did from here to here sometimes it will go sideways as it did from here to here sometimes the market will move down it may move up it may move down it may move sideways and within those three possible directions there are patterns that emerge that tell a little bit of a story about uh, what we can expect the market to do next 